Hi there, Jeff here from the Wetsuit Centre talking to you today about the XL Revolt Winter Wetsuit for 2015 into 2016 winter. Uh, the XL Revolt is a fairly recent addition to the um, XL range. Basically, a few years ago they had a bit of a reshuffle just to sort of um, uh, give each wetsuit a bit of a different sort of niche and a bit of a different price point, basically. Uh, this happens quite often with different wetsuit manufacturers. Uh, once uh, sort of new technology comes in, they just sort of maybe introduce a new suit and reshuffle the range. So the Revolt came in as the suit underneath the dry lock, so basically the suit down from the dry lock a little bit more affordable. It's still very much a high-end wetsuit in terms of the technology within the suit and also the price. Um, so it's essentially what the dry lock used to be uh, before the dry lock went down the road of uh, power seam welded seams, which is the sort of stitch-free seams. Uh, and then a few other things like the sort of waterproof coating or the fabric and um, but essentially mainly the sort of the stitch free technology. So the, uh, the Revolt is one suit down, but having said that you get a huge amount of technology within the suit and it's incredibly warm. The thickness of the suit as with most of the XL winter range is a 5.4. Okay, so you've got 5 mil of near cream on the lower body and then you get 4 mil on the upper body around the shoulders and around the arms where you need a bit more flexibility. It really is a true 5mm or even a bit more than 5mm on the XL suits as well. They're known for making very warm winter wetsuits uh, and you can't get around the fact that you need nice thick neoprene to do that. So where with some of the manufacturers, some of the uh, brands have a bit of a thinner sort of 5mm, a bit more of a true 5mm like O'Neill, um, then with the XL and a sort of probably rip curl as well and sea skins, it's a bit more of a chunky 5mm. So if you actually to measure that, it might actually go slightly over the 5mm. Okay, so 5.4 uh, uh, in terms of thickness, in terms of the actual quality of neoprene, it is the most flexible neoprene that XL would use. So the high end, super, super stretchy neoprene. Very, very lightweight, soft to the touch, and extremely flexible. Um, the, how they do that is they actually put more bubbles within the, uh, or more air within the uh, rubber, within the neoprene itself. Um, that helps insulate you because you can imagine all those little bubbles, as warm air leaves your body, gets trapped within those bubbles, which then insulate you. Uh, and it's obviously going to give it more flexibility because there's less resistance. Okay, so that's the whole way through the suit. So when you actually pick up the suit, it does feel very, very lightweight, um, which is definitely a good thing because you want flexibility as well as warmth. The seams, unlike the dry lock, so the dry lock being the more expensive of the two, has what we call a stitch free seam or a power seam welding. And what they do is they just glue the pieces of neoprene together, uh, tape the inside of the suit, and then they bond it on the outside with like a very thin rubber taping. You don't get that with this suit. Uh, the benefits of that is obviously it's going to be very robust, but it's also going to be completely unrestrictive because it's going to stretch. But having said that, uh, it's just got a standard stitch on the outside of the suit, but you still get that flat taping throughout the entire of the inside of the suit as well. That taping feels really good against the skin. It's nice and flat. It also has loads of stretch. And then obviously through the rest of the suit, you do have the stitching, so maybe not as flexible as the dry lock in theory. But having said that, there's still a huge amount of flex within the suit. Okay, And most suits these days have got that sort of traditional stitching, unless they're sort of a bit more expensive. So um, yeah, so that's the seams. They shouldn't let in any water. should be very durable and should keep you pretty much dry, so no water coming in through the seams. Uh, as with most suits, you have like a year's warranty if that does start to happen. So you've got a, a bit of a sort of a backup plan should your suit start to leak. And the warranty with XL is very good. Um, so that's pretty much the seams, the quality of neoprene and thickness. Some of the other features within the suit, you get the standard smooth skin panel on the outside uh, and around the kidneys as well. Just stop any wind penetration to the suit, keeps you warmer, keeps the wind out on those sort of cold, bitter days, but also really good for wind sports to keep the wind off your body, such as kite surfing and uh, any sort of like a wind surfing, that kind of thing. Um, one of the sort of bonuses you get with the suit, similar to the dry lock, you get the closed in cuff and that cuff just basically nice and narrow to make sure it creates a good bond with your wrist, stops any flush up through the sleeve, but also um, creates a good bond with your glove. Around the ankle, on the inside of the ankle, you get a nice sort of smooth, bit of smooth gummy sort of taping there as well, which does a similar thing to your ankle, creates a good sort of bond with your ankle and just sort of sticks it on there and hopefully for prevents sort of as many flush throughs on the inside of your leg. Around the collar, you get a standard sort of smooth skin collar on the inside, stop any rubbing and chafing, and again creating a good bond with your neck, and hopefully uh, getting rid of as uh, many flush throughs again, stopping this water getting in through the neck piece. And it's a single line neck which uh, is nice and soft against the neck, unlike some of the double roll neck collars can be a little bit sort of tight, um, but maybe a little bit better at keeping out water. It's debatable. 
Um, so that's everything going on the outside of the suit. Standard knee pads, a Duraflex knee pad, which stop any sort of wear and tear through the knees. Um, and then they're just basically there to give the suit a bit more of a shelf life. It's kind of a standard thing in most suits these days. Um, so we'll have a little look inside the suit, but as we're sort of doing that, that's probably one of the biggest sort of differences between this and the dry lock and the Infinity is a lot down to the seams, but it's also a lot down to the lining of the suit as well. There's a new technology inside the suit called the salient lining. Um, the salient lining is basically, uh, salient is actually a different brand altogether, a different technology by a different manufacturer, which was used pr previously in uh, other sports such as sort of, sort of compression rash vests, that kind of thing, to sort of keep the muscles warm uh, and to give a, to reflect heat. The fibre reflects heat, infrared heat, from the muscles as it leaves the body back into the muscles to give them a, sort of, to give you a sort of a, a longer durability in your muscles, a sort of give you a longer sort of, uh, you know, um, One of the primary differences between uh, the, sort of, uh, the dry lock and the revolt, um, and uh, certainly the infinity as well, is the lining inside of the suit, uh, which is definitely worth mentioning. Uh, the lining inside the suit is the salient lining, and the salient lining is effectively like a, sort of like a thermal lining, yeah, basically. Uh, we'll turn the suit inside out to give a little look, but it's probably the biggest selling uh, benefit of this suit over the last few years is the introduction of salient. Uh, the salient is actually made by a separate company and uh, they used it previously on things like rash vests and sort of sports goods which basically were sold with the premise that they'll keep your muscles warmer. So what they work is that as heat leaves your body, infrared heat leaves your body, the minerals within this material reflect that heat back into your muscles. Okay, and the idea is that gives you sort of keeps the muscles warmer and more oxygen within the muscles, which allows you to sort of do whatever sport that you're doing for longer without sort of getting tired, without the muscles getting fatigued. Okay, so that works really well within a wetsuit in theory because you're reflecting heat back into the muscles, which keeps you warmer, keeps you looser in the water, and keeps you warmer for longer. So that's that primary selling benefit of the salient technology. So the difference between the dry lock and the revolt and that kind of thing is the amount of that salient lining that you get within the suit. The dry lock these days, you have a lot of that um, salient uh, running throughout the entire suit, and you've also got some of the new sort of quick drying, fluffier material as well. So if we turn the suit inside out, and I'll show you what's, look what's going on on the inside. The same sort of uh, dry lock entry system, which is up and over the head, chest entry, front zip, wet suit. And uh, basically, the way that that works is the chest entry or the, the actual uh, entry piece is sewn over the inside of the wet suit here. So this is the inside of the wetsuit here, brought right up to the collar. Okay, you open that up, get in through the neck piece, which isn't as hard as it seems because it's sort of uh, folded over here into two separate pieces, which open up nice and wide. You get in through the top there, and then the chest entry panel comes up and over the top, and then locks across the front, and uh, preventing any water coming in through the uh, wetsuit through the collar, because any water that does come in through the collar, instead of going into the suit, is met with the inside pieces of neoprene and then channeled out through the side here, and uh, any water that comes up through the side of the wetsuit here as well won't actually be able to get straight into the suit, it should just flush straight back out again. So it was um, found to be a really successful system at keeping water out of the wetsuit, uh, but also very, very comfortable, good because of the fact that you don't have a zip on the back of the wetsuit, so it gives you more freedom in the back of the suit, um, but also very good at sort of getting on and off yourself because you don't have to grab a zip and sort of struggle to get the zip up the back. So as long as you can get in and out of the wetsuit, it's very easy to just sort of fasten it yourself. And with the suit with a YKK water resistant corrosion free zip, and that zips from out, inside to the outside as well. So other like some of the other sort of manufacturers, we have to sort of fiddle with the tab to get it to hook on. This one zips from out, inside to out, meaning it's very easy to do yourself, get in and out of basically. goes up and over the head, you've got a toggle there just to fasten it to create a better bond. And it's very unlikely that you'll get any water coming through the side. Water that does come into the collar, most of it should be met with the inside of the suit and flushed out, but you will obviously get some water coming into the inside of the suit. It's pretty much inevitable. Yeah, the inside of the collar, you've got that smooth skin piece to stop any sort of like rubbing and chafing. And you've also got a key holder as well there, just for a non-electronic key, just to keep safe from the inside of the chest suit. Okay, so, what we'll do now, Let's show you the inside of the suit. You can see what's sort of happening with the salient lining, that kind of thing. 
So, as I mentioned before, the salient is that sort of uh, stuff with the minerals within this fabric itself which reflect heat back into the suit. With the dry lock, you're getting a lot of the really quick drying stuff now, which is kind of like a back comb, just create a fluffy sort of material with a quick dry lining. And basically, with the suit, this suit you do get that, but you only get it around the chest and around the back. So you've got the back there and then the chest there. And basically that's sort of like a more of a fluffier material, which dries very quickly. It's fluffy and nice and uh, pleasing to the touch, feels good against your skin. Also very good at trapping warm air and insulating you, but also dries extremely quickly. So you get that quick dry material on the chest and back panel. Whereas with the dry lock, you get that the whole way through. But through the rest of the suit, you see that tie-dye material, that is the salient lining. And that salient lining runs right the way through to the ankle. And that will reflect heat back into your body, especially into the lower part around your core, to keep you warmer for longer. And then you've got all of that sort of fusion weld taping the whole way through the inside of the suit, just to really sort of make sure the seams don't let into any water, and to give the suit a longer shelf life. Okay, so that's throughout the whole entire inside of the wetsuit. As I said before, with the um, Infinity you get, again, less of that lining. I don't think you get any of the fluffy lining, it's just the salient. And with the dry lock you get all of the fluffy lining the whole way through, apart from the ankles and the shoulders, where you get the addition of some salient lining there, which you don't get in the shoulders of this wetsuit. So, that's the primary difference between the Revolt and the dry lock. But uh, the uh, Revolt is definitely probably a lighter wetsuit because there's less of that lining going on. Feels light to the touch and uh, obviously a little bit more affordable in the XL range, but uh, fantastic wetsuit.